Good morning and welcome to worship today. Good morning. I'd like to welcome any of our guests and visitors that we may have here uh, coming today for our uh, homecoming Sunday as well as for the picnic to follow. So, welcome. We'll start off with our joys and concerns. BJ? Uh, prayers for Holly Mazzarelli, that's Rob Orr's daughter. On October 3rd, she's going for extensive surgery just to do a biopsy. And she'll be laid up for a long time. So, prayers for Holly Mazzarelli? Yeah. yeah. Okay, for upcoming biopsy surgery at all? Uh, I don't see. Oh, darling. Um, yeah, I think our, our Ireland travelers need some prayers. Yes. Yeah. They're all in a mess. So, um, yeah. and Carol had a lot of extensive stuff, too. She ended up in the ER the other night. It was cool. From being dehydrated and coughing, she was bleeding and stuff like that. So, But she's doing okay. They're giving her all the good drugs. And yeah. she's... Um, well, I heard they had COVID or... They all yeah. had COVID. Yeah. Like COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and in cool. fact, I know they were trying to get some medication to take with them and uh, I don't know how that all worked out. I guess maybe they weren't able to do it. BJ? Well, in reference to the COVID, I talked to Lorraine this morning. She's still struggling, but the medication also has some side effects. But, um, yeah, uh, Lorraine and Carol were really very sick. All right, so let's keep them all our weary returning travelers who are, went to Ireland are now uh, having some health issues. Carol said it was well worth it. Though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That was yeah. good. <laughs> you got, in this case, you got to take the bad with the good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to offer up prayers. I don't see Jan or Dan here, but Dan had a, uh, a little procedure uh, concerning a, his heart uh, to find out that he does have a, a valve issue. And he does have some upcoming surgery. So just we'll keep Dan Stevenson in our prayers as he has that coming in the next uh, few weeks, I guess. Okay. Any other joys or concerns? Well, I have a joy for you, Tom. <laughs> Tom uh, won our Woo! This team won in our outing last year. Uh, yesterday. There was a team effort. Mike bought that. Some of you know Mike. That he's my partner in the league. So we teamed up with two other uh, guys in the league, and yeah, we had a we had a blast out. It was a lot of fun, and yeah, we just hey had a good golf day. So it yes. happens. As they say, a blind squirrel does find acorns once in a while, and that was our day to find quite a few acorns. <laughs> It's because you warmed up your muscles setting up those tents. <laughs> it's a secret weapon. Well, whatever it was, it, 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 hey, we have a good time. Thanks, Lee. All right, any other, uh, Barry? There was a successful fundraiser yesterday in a high school. It was put on by True Father. And it was the, uh, he was the family, a brain yeah. was two years old. Yeah. And it was the kids, it was the, the program. Joyce or concerns? Joel? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> 
My wife's foot left, looks like it's doing better. Good. I don't know if it is or not, but the, the doctors are happy, and I'm not a doctor, so I'll have to take care of Continue prayers and some good news for Holly Schrager. Great. Any other joys or concerns? Moving on to announcements. Obviously, we know we have a picnic today, and we have the blessing of the animals coming up. October 6th. October 6th. Yeah. Darlene? Yep. Kitchen renovation starts tomorrow morning. Kitchen renovation tomorrow morning. Right so through. do you need people to... Well, we need to move the stuff that's under the sink and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Anything that's on that counter after the Yeah. Okay. And the refrigerator's got to move. Yeah. Um, and also, if you... There's... If we can move a few cars uh, in, near the shade after worship so that uh, sometimes people like to set up their... Uh, some cables under the trees. Um, that'd be good. So. Alrighty. Any other announcements? Let us begin with our opening hymn, number 97. He is Lord. <laughs>
You make your presence known in the lives of your people through all of our events at church, whether they seem holy or not. The warmth of our special dinners and our Christmas bazaar, how we welcome people when we host events such as the tree lighting on the green. And often, God, we come to you when we have hit bottom, when we're sick, when we're confused, when we're facing a crisis of some kind, be it financial, spiritual, emotional, or physical, we come to you with our grief. We come to you with our confusion. We come to you with our sense of being overwhelmed. And always, God, you are there for us. You have answers for us. You are able to help us sort through our options. You are able to bring us comfort and wisdom, the kind of comfort and wisdom that we all could use more of. And God, most of all, we are privileged to know that you come to people through us, through our actions, through our kindnesses, no matter how small. God, we thank you that you have enabled us to be your people and to offer your love. We ask that your love be offered today as we gather for fellowship on the green with our fellow Christians, that others may see our love and feel welcomed. We offer these our prayers in the name of the beloved Jesus, who taught us that we are all children in your eyes, and taught us to pray together, saying these words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
number 470. your brain 
And one of them has seeped into my brain, and I think about it every time I hear this verse or the similar uh, passages in other scripture, where Jesus says, if you want to be the first, you have to be uh, uh, last. If you want to be the uh, greatest, you have to be the servant of all. Uh, and and when I hear this passage now, I think about the movie Talladega Nights, The Legend of Ricky Bobby. Um, am I the only one who's seen the Talladega Nights, The Legend of Ricky Bobby in here? No, I've seen it. Yeah. So it's a very, like all Will Ferrell movies, um, it's about a guy who is talented but not the smartest and also has a really big ego. Uh, the, the character Ricky Bobby, who is a race car driver, and he has a best friend, Cal, who is his sidekick driver, and basically kind of always comes in second uh, because he is fending off the other drivers for Ricky. And uh, uh, there is religion in this uh, movie, and um, it it is, I mean, he's a race car driver, he's from the South, so it would kind of make sense that he would be religious. But he has a slightly distorted version of Christianity, and uh, um, he, uh, he and his friends <coughs> argue about uh, when they say grace, which Jesus they should pray to. He likes to play to baby Jesus, um, and, uh, which is a valid thing, so, but that's his, his favorite thing to do. Um, and, you know, he has all the accoutrements of a fast car driver who's a big winner. He uh, has a beautiful wife, some children who uh, I think are a little spoiled. And, uh, uh, you know, he has, he has wealth and he thinks pretty highly of himself. And then he hits the skids and he stops winning. He gets, <coughs> he gets afraid and he's like, you know, only going really slow. And so he, uh, he starts to uh, lose. His wife dumps him for his best friend and sidekick, former sidekick. Uh, um, and uh, he and his kids have to go and, and live with uh, his mom, who teaches the boys how to be well-behaved with. Help love. But the reason I think of Ricky Bobby when I hear this verse is he has a saying that he says all the time, which is, if you're not first, you're last. If you're not first, you're last. And I have to believe that the writers of this movie knew that they were taking this actual passage of scripture and inverting it. Um, because, of course, uh, the lesson that Ricky Bobby learns throughout the movie is that if you want to be first, you have to be humble. You have to be willing to be the servant of all. So he has to go live with his mom and help his mom around the house and get his kids to help with chores. He, he has to be humbled. He has to realize that it was wrong of him to force his friend into the position of always losing because he felt like he always had to win and that he was looking down on his friend. And eventually, of course, he, he, he is redeemed. He finds a new girlfriend. Um, and uh, because he comes to the realization that this passage of Scripture teaches us, which is that true greatness involves humility. True greatness involves being willing to do whatever it takes. And some of what it takes might be pretty humbling. Um, and when you become a pastor, uh, you find out about humility, or in the process of becoming a pastor, you find out about humility. I always tell people that at the time I started seminary, I worshipped at a church uh, where we had chairs instead of pews. It was a modern building. And we, uh, we didn't have a fellowship hall. We, if we had a large event, um, well, we had coffee hour like in our narthex area it was bigger than this one and we kind of spilled wherever we needed to around the building 
But if we had a large event, we would move the chairs. Or if there was like a wedding or something, uh, normally we had two side aisles, so a lot of times for weddings they had to move the chairs so that there could be, the bride wanted to walk down one main aisle. Um, and so the pastor told, the pastor, when he, he got up there to preach on Sunday, he liked to be able to look out and see the chairs arranged just so. And so he finally got to the point where he said, listen, don't even bother to put the chairs back. I will put the chairs back after, you know, for Sunday morning. And so that's when I developed my first definition of what a pastor is. The pastor is a person that puts the chairs back. Um, and that definition has really served me well all this whole past 30 years. Um, because that is the kind of thing that you need to be willing and able to do at the, at, at the least notice is to humble yourself. Um, so that, you know, you, you make things happen. You have to be able, you have to be willing and able um, to do anything. And I think probably y'all know, I've, I've done a lot of things. I mean, I've cleaned my share of toilets um, and messes and uh, shoveled walks and sprinkled sand and salt and, you know, the whole, over the course of time, uh, you, you do a lot, of, a lot of humbling things to be a leader and uh, to be a leader. Uh, if you are the kind of leader that Jesus is calling on you to be, which is a, a servant leader. Um, and for a lot of us, that comes okay. I mean, you know, if you grow up in a large family, you probably got pretty used to doing whatever, whenever was required. Or if you came up in, in the kind of uh, family that I did, where, you know, everybody was supposed to be willing to do things and do their, their share. But it's not easy for everybody to reach a certain position in life a lot of times. And it can be hard to bend and uh, to be humble. And the disciples, apparently, their proximity to Jesus and what Jesus is able to do, the kind of wisdom that Jesus is espousing, the fact that this passage comes right after he reveals that he is the Messiah, they start to feel like, we must be pretty special. Um, and they start to fight among themselves, like, who, who is the top dog? Who is the best one? Who is the one who's in charge? Um, and it, it can be hard to let go when you're used to calling the shots, when you're, when you're used to uh, doing things your way. I, a lot of these men came from small businesses, and maybe they were the oldest son, and maybe they were in charge, and... So they get used to being the one in charge or the top one, and now they are in a situation where they're one of 12. Uh, or if the crowds are bigger, they're one of many. And Jesus uh, uh, tries to bring it home to them that if you want to lead, you have to be humble. And he brings a child, and he says, you have to be like this child. <coughs> um, now, you know, I, in fairness, some kids are bossy. Like, you were a kid, right? Were you the bossy one, or did you, or, or was there another bossy one? There was I, another bossy one. There was another bossy one. Yeah, I, sometimes I was the bossy one, and sometimes I, uh, my younger cousin was the bossy one. It kind of, kind of depended, but I, I used to... I used to trick my brother that we had to do whatever I wanted to do. I always had a reason, and, um, you know, I would be like, well, we have to do what I want because we're in my room. Oh, okay. Then we'd be in his room. Well, wait a minute. We're in my room. Oh, but I'm the oldest, so we have to do. And he's just like, you know, he's four. So he's like, okay, well, that logic is sound, I'm sure. So I'm just going to trust you and, 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 and go along with you. And that worked until he got to be about 10, and then he started to get bigger in me, and then suddenly um, I couldn't boss him around anymore. But it was, it was an era. It lasted, you know. Uh, lasted a little while. I guess I, I, I got my...
my comeuppance. Um, but uh, in general, children are, at least at that time, are at the bottom of the pecking order in the Roman Empire. They're near the bottom. They have no power. Um, you know, you've got you've got like the king, you know, the Caesar. And then there's, you know, various people under the Caesar. You have landowners and, you know, their wives and their servants. And children are at the very bottom. And they have no power. You know, and Jesus says, relatively speaking, in God's kingdom, you need to realize you have no more power than this child has in the Roman Empire. In God's kingdom... You have to rely on the mercy of God. And you have to do what God wants you to do. You know, God is like the one in charge. But unlike Caesar, God is a good leader. So you can trust. And so you, you don't need all this stuff like, well, what is my ranking in the disciples? Am I second going on first? Am I third but coming up fast? You don't have to worry about your ranking. All you have to remember is that you need to know what God wants you to do, what you're called to do. And what you're called to do is what you see needs doing. You know, maybe there's a sick person and you can call Jesus' attention to that person. Maybe there is somebody who's poor and you can help them. Maybe there's somebody who's hungry and you can provide what they need. That is, that is our role in the kingdom of each and every one of us. And sometimes that means that we have to take charge of something and we have to be organized and we need a clipboard and a checklist and we need to call people up and we need to decide who's gonna do each thing. And sometimes it means we're the one that cleans the toilet or scrubs the floor. Um, and we need to be versatile. That's what Jesus is teaching here. That we need versatility in the kingdom of God. Because we need people who are willing to do whatever needs doing at a given moment. And sometimes that means stepping up and being in charge. And sometimes that means stepping back, letting somebody else take charge, and doing whatever they need to do. Um, and I see this in churches over and over. I see that there are people that are exactly like this. That one day they are in charge of something and they're very organized. And the next day they're like, okay, well, I guess I will chop the vegetables for you. Um, and it's beautiful because I don't think all organizations are like that. In fact, I know they're not. I've been in corporate America. And I have met people who are servant leaders in corporate America. But they don't generally get ahead, and um, so they tend to drop out and go to other types of jobs. Or, or they, can, they content themselves with, okay, well, I'm going to be in the middle, and I'm going to stay in the middle, and I'm going to have a good life elsewhere. Um, I'm, I'm not going to concentrate on my career. I'm going to concentrate on my community, my family, whatever uh, else is in life. Um, but God calls us to be like this. God calls us to be versatile, to be willing to lead, to be willing to follow, and to not consider one better than the other. And for that, for that teaching, for that wisdom, that we're always beloved, we're always equal in the eyes of God, we give thanks. Amen. Final hymn is Heavenly Sunlight.
comment. 